on my beloved students to the Super Memory for Schools program. My name is Tu Nyan, and today it is a pleasure to continue teaching you biology. Today's lesson content, we will learn about Lesson 37, Diversity and General Characteristics of Amphibian Class. Did you know there are about 4,000 species of amphibians in the world, and in Vietnam we have discovered about 147 species. And with that diversity, we will learn about how diverse the species composition is in the habitat about its behavior. Next, we will learn about the general characteristics of amphibian class and the role of amphibians in human life. First, we will learn about the first part, which is the diversity of species composition, habitat, and behavior. Let's learn about the diversity of species composition, as I introduced to you earlier. In the world, there are about 4,000 species of amphibians, and these 4,000 species will be divided into three orders that are amphibians with tails, represented by Tam Dao, Salamander, the tailless amphibious, represented by the East Asian bullfrog that we learned in the previous lesson, Lesson 35. And finally, the legless amphibians represented by the Ichthymus glutinosus. I would like to briefly introduce the tailed amphibians represented by Tam Dao salamander. In terms of characteristics, they both have a long body with a flattened tail on both sides. The front and hind limbs are both equal length, mainly active during the daytime. The order of tailless amphibians represented by East Asian bullfrogs is the order with the largest number of species of the amphibian class, and they are characterized by a short body, shorter forelimbs, and hind limbs, mainly active at night. Legless amphibians are represented by Ichthymus glutinosus have similar body features to worms, but are larger than worms without limbs, and they are active both day and night. Regarding the habitat and behavior you observed, it is clear that Tam Dao salamanders, their behavior would be to run away, operating mainly during the day. For representatives of tree frogs, their behavior is running, hiding, and active mainly at night. Another represented is the large banded bullfrog with the habitat of intimidating the enemy. The house toad with the poisonous resin secretion and the ichthymus glutinous, as I described in the previous part, with the running away and hiding behavior. Thus, through the part I just presented above, you can see that each species is the amphibian class has a very different habitat and behavior. First, about the habitat, you find that amphibians can live underwater, can live on land, can live in soil burrows and bushes. So in terms of behavior, amphibians have behaviors that are mainly about self-defense, such as running and hiding. In the ichthymus glutinous or Tem Dao salamanders, toxic secretion behaviors in house toads and intimidating the enemy in large banded bullfrogs. So what are the general characteristics in amphibians so they can adapt to both aquatic and terrestrial lifestyles? Let's move on to the next part of the lesson. Let's learn about the general characteristics of amphibian class. As I introduced it to you, amphibian refers to animals that can live both in water and on land. So they will have the following general characteristics. First, they have bare and moist skin. Secondly, they move on all four legs except for the legless amphibians. Next, they breathe with their skin and lungs. And mostly, like I told you the other day, the amphibians will breathe through their skin. Next, amphibians reproduce in the aquatic environment, fertilizing externally. Another idea is that tadpoles develop through the metamorphosis, like Lesson 35, East Asia Bullfrogs, I taught you. Remember? From the stage, from the frog egg hatching, to the tadpole developing, to the baby frog, and then to the adult frog, through different stages, it has a different morphological development. So, we call it a metamorphic development, which means there is a change in morphology. And the last general characteristic is that because of the body temperature of amphibian changes, with the temperature of the environment, amphibians are called ectothermal animals. So, with general characteristics like these, and with the diversity and richness of species composition in terms of quantity, habitat, 
and behavior. What roles do amphibians play in human life? Let's find out through the final part that is part three, the role of amphibians. To learn about the role of amphibians in human life, let's go to part three of the role of amphibians. Amphibians are useful for agriculture. First of all, amphibians kill insects that destroy crops. They replace this activity of birds during the day because as I told you, amphibians are mainly nocturnal foraging. Secondly, they destroy vectors of disease transmission such as flies and mosquitoes. Followed by that, they have food values such as East Asian bullfrogs and medicinal values such as toad power to treat malnutrition in children. And another very important role is that they act experimental subjects in psychology like the field frog. For example, is this a frog breathing experiment or is this a muscle contraction experiment? In conclusion, the content of our lesson today, I emphasize three main parts. The first part is the diversity of species composition, habitat, and behavior. The second part is about the general characteristics of amphibians and the third part is about the role of amphibians in human life. This lesson clearly shows you that amphibians have an extremely diverse and rich number of species both in terms of species composition, habitat, and behavior. However, recently the number of amphibians is decreasing severely in the wild. This is due to factors ranging from hunting amphibians for food, environmental pollution, and human use of pesticides. Henceforth, we need to propose measures to protect and breed economically valuable amphibians. Through today's lesson, I hope that you can study this lesson effectively and gently. Wish you all a very good study. Thank you for always supporting and accompanying the Super Memory for Schools program.